Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about gaming on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. You might have heard that the new ARM chipset is a huge upgrade over the previous Intel chipset because it can run much cooler, quieter and faster. They can also run many games exceptionally well too. I hope to show you that some of the very best strategy games have been released on macOS that perform very well, even on the cheapest base M1 MacBook Air. All the footage used in this video has been recorded from my MacBook Air M1 2020 with 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. So first up is Civilization VI, which is a turn-based strategy 4X video game developed by Firaxis Games and is the latest entry into the Civilization series. Your goal is to develop a civilization from an early settlement through many in-game millennia to become a world power and achieve one of several victory conditions, such as through military, technology or cultural domination. This game runs very well on the M1 chip, especially considering that there is lots of complexity that needs to be calculated between the game turns. This game used to make my previous Intel MacBooks fans scream, and thankfully, on my new MacBook Air 2020, it's completely silent, and it runs at a much higher frame rate than my Intel Mac could ever achieve. You also have the option of running the previous entry into the series, Civilization V, which also runs very nicely on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Next up is StarCraft II, which is a real-time strategy game created by Blizzard Entertainment. The game has a fantastic and engrossing single-player campaign split between the three races Terran, Zerg and Protoss. The first Terran campaign is now free to play, so there's no excuse not to pick it up. All you have to do is download the Battle.net launcher and make an account. In addition, there is a co-op mode which you can also play online for free. To get the most out of the game, you should buy the full digital edition so they can play the highly competitive online multiplayer scene. In this particular video, I'm doing a 4x4 replay test just to see how the actual competitive multiplayer would actually perform in game. And as you can see, it's holding up very nicely. Next up is XCOM 2, which is the turn based tactical strategy game made by Firaxis, which is part of the reboot series of the original 1994 XCOM. As you can see, the level I'm demonstrating to you is one of the last and is fairly graphically intensive, so I've had to turn down the settings quite far to make this playable on the M1 Mac. However, it works well even if the settings have been turned down. This is one of the most content-laden strategy games you can buy with lots of randomised levels, replayability and also the expansion pack War of the Chosen, which you can buy as part of the collection. So this game is Crusader Kings 3, which is the latest grand strategy game made by Paradox, which is set in the Middle Ages. Players can begin their kingdom in either 867 or 1066 and play until the year 1453. This is one of the most complex grand strategy games available, with an extreme amount of simulation and detail, including deep character relationships with vassals, dukes and other kingdoms, political schemes and religion. This game has a large amount of content in development, as well as mods which are also supported on macOS. If you're a fan of Paradox Grand Strategy games, then you should also consider playing Europa Universalis 4 or Hearts of Iron 4, which both perform extremely well on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So Total War Rome Remastered is just one of the many Total War games that is very playable on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. This particular remaster takes the older Rome Total War from 2004 and gives it a graphics and UI overhaul with new high resolution textures and widescreen support. This game combines grand strategy style gameplay where decisions taken on the overworld have an impact on the highly tactical real-time battles. At the time of recording, the Steam version will only provide the Intel or Rosetta 2 version of the game. A full M1 native version is not yet released on Steam or the App Store. Other recent Total War titles also work very well on the M1 Mac, including Three Kingdoms, Troy, Warhammer 2 and Shogun 2. Desperados 3 is a highly tactical stealth game set in the Wild West, which features five playable characters, with each having access to unique weapons and abilities. Players can play the game as a stealth game in which they can assassinate enemies silently or disguise kills as accidental deaths. It is possible for players to complete missions without killing anyone or knocking out and tying up enemies. This game is made by the same developers as Shadow Tactics Blade of the Shogun, which is playable using parallels on the M1 Mac. The Banner Saga 2 is part of a trilogy of turn-based strategy tactic games, which have all been released on macOS and run beautifully on the M1 Mac. The game takes place in a fictional world inspired by Norse mythology. The game tells the story of the player's caravan as a whole as they combat a warlike race named the Dredge. The game features an interactive story with dialogue choices which changes depending on player's decisions and has effects on the tactical combat. This is one of the most interesting strategy games available for the M1 Mac, with a beautiful unique art style and deep gameplay and story. 
Phoenix Point is a strategy tactics game featuring a turn-based tactics system that has been developed by Snapshot Games. This game might look a little bit familiar. That's because it's been developed by Julian Gollop, the original creator of the XCOM series. Phoenix Point is a spiritual successor that features the alien invasion of Earth and you are put in charge of its defence in a lone base called Phoenix Point. How players resolve these challenges can result in different endings for the game. This game runs very well on the M1 Mac and compares favourably to XCOM 2, especially considering that Phoenix Point was released several years after XCOM 2 came out. Company of Heroes 2 is a real-time strategy game developed by Relic Entertainment. As with the original Company of Heroes, the game is set in World War II, but with focus on the Eastern Front, with players primarily controlling the side of the Soviet Red Army during various stages of the Eastern Front, from Operation Barbarossa to the Battle of Berlin. This game performs very well on the M1 Mac, holding 60 frames per second throughout. This game is full of content and its expansions are often given away for free or they are discounted to a very low price, so it's well worth picking up this bargain the next time it's on sale. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is a real-time strategy game developed by Forgotten Empires and is a remaster of the original Age of Empires 2 The Age of Kings, celebrating the 20th anniversary of the original. This remaster supports improved visuals, 4K resolution and a new expansion pack The Last Khans which adds 4 new civilizations. It includes all the previous expansions from the original and the HD edition. This game is only available on Windows and in order to get it to work on the M1 Mac you will need something called Crossover. In order to find instructions on how to install this game, please check the link in the description or click on the right hand corner of this screen right now and you'll be taken to a tutorial video. Felseal Arpiter's Mark is a turn based tactical RPG with a focus on storytelling and strategic battles. The game is deeply influenced by the classic strategy game Final Fantasy Tactics with an isometric viewpoint, job classes, magic, deep combat mechanics, customization and a multitude of strategic options to play with. This is definitely a throwback to the older retro tactical RPGs but with modernised graphics and interface and the game works wonderfully on the M1 Apple Mac. Next up is Command & Conquer Remastered Collection which is a remaster of the first two titles in the real-time strategy video game series Command & Conquer by Westwood Studios. It features the games Command & Conquer and its sequel Red Alert with rebuilt 4K graphics, remastered music, upscaled FMVs, UI improvements and bonus materials. This is the Windows edition of the game being run in the Parallels Virtual Machine. Despite this being a Windows x86 game being emulated to ARM instructions running in a virtual machine, it actually performs extremely well as you can see. If you'd like to find out more about how to run this game on your M1 Mac, please follow the instructions in the description to find out more or click in the top right hand corner of the screen to be taken to a tutorial video. Frostpunk is a city building strategy game developed by 11-bit studios. Players take the role of a leader in an alternate history steampunk world in which they must build and maintain a city during a worldwide volcanic winter, managing resources, making choices on how to survive and exploring the area outside their city for survivors, resources or other useful items. The performance of this macOS port on the M1 is decent considering how much simulation and detail is going on, achieving approximately 30 to 40 frames per second at 1080p on my MacBook Air M1 2020. So anyway, we have reached the end of our list and if you think that there's any strategy games missing that are playable on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please leave a comment. I'm also going to leave a link in the description for the website Apple Gaming Wiki. This is a project that I've been working on for some time and the aim is to list all of the fixes and compatibility for every single game that can run on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Every single game mentioned in this particular video will have a corresponding Apple Gaming Wiki article and if any settings or fixes are missing then please feel free to go and add them yourself. No account is required. What we want to be able to have is the most up to date and useful resource for M1 Apple Silicon Mac gamers. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.